giving you an urgent update on some developing news stories and uh, initiatives that we have launched. The uh, most important of which is that the report from the Director of National Intelligence may in fact be delayed that is due on uh, June 25th. Uh, the former Director of National Intelligence uh, for the last administration uh, two weeks ago in an interview said it would be coming early on June 1st. Now what changed? In the interim, as you know, we've been working with Carol Rosen, who is the spokesperson for uh, rocket inventor Werner von Braun and uh, senior uh, Russian officials and others around the world to try to get a ban on weapons in space, since those weapons are actually not being designed not for uh, human to human conflict, but for targeting uh, extraterrestrial vehicles. And this weapon ban from outer space is a, a matter of importance to, quite frankly, the survival of this planet. Uh, the R Russian, Chinese, and American, and the Biden administration, in a few days ago, agreed to, in principle, sign this treaty. Uh, we have since learned that, in fact, that is most likely a deception and a stalling tactic and that now the Council on Foreign Relations uh, in their foreign policy journal uh, in the last uh, 24 hours has released a report advising against signing this uh, uh, treaty to ban weapons from outer space. Uh, this is all very dynamic and in flux, and it has to do a great deal with a report that came out two days ago that it may be that the Director of National Intelligence report that by statute and law is due on no later than June 25th of this year will be delayed. What's happening, the best of our assessment from intelligence sources is that because of what we have been doing uh, behind the scenes with officials both in the United States and in other countries, and in particular in Russia, where we now have a very senior retired general who publicly came forward recently stating that we are not alone in the universe, that the extraterrestrials are not hostile, and that there have been all kinds of disinformation and deceptive actions to pose that they are, but in reality, they are not. And that the, this is an urgent reason why we need to have weapons uh, banned from space because we are sharing space with other civilizations and other cosmic cultures. Now, this videotape, which was loaded on a non-governmental site that is headed up by uh, a cosmonaut who is working with us, who is this main uh, trainer of astronauts and cosmonauts for Russia that go up to the space station and elsewhere, uh, Timothy Igorov. Uh, as soon as that interview by this general was put up, their site was crashed and disappeared off YouTube. Um, they have since gotten it back up. But what we're finding is that because uh, we have been advising that other countries, since neither, uh, all the way back to my meeting with the, the senior, most senior people in the in Clinton administration, no U.S. administration has been willing to truthfully disclose this issue. But we know that the covert interests have authorized this report from the Director of National Intelligence, which will present this as a national security threat, quote, unquote, uh, which is completely false. The complete truth is the only threat that have come from UFOs have come from man-made ones. And as you know, from following the research we have done, we have dispositive evidence, in fact, proof that many of the UFOs that are seen are made by the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and other aerospace contractors. And we have many people on our team who have confirmed that. Additionally, we have a document signed in the handwriting and written in penmanship by the head of the Lockheed Skunk Works uh, who has confirmed that in 1986, when he wrote the letter, that UFOs were both ours, man-made, and, quote, extraterrestrial. Now, 
the reason this is so important is that the, the biggest part of the secrecy has nothing to do with extraterrestrials. It has to do with the deceptive plans to use man-made UFOs to present a existential threat to the world. In other words, they want to set up a false flag operation that looks like War of the Worlds, where the whole thing is being orchestrated by covert uh, man-made assets. You will notice that this narrative is missing from every news report, every so-called ufologist who appears on Fox News and elsewhere, because they have been authorized to tell half a truth, which is much more dangerous than a lie. Basically, what they're saying is, yes, the UFOs are real, and then they add the lie as follows. They cannot be ours because we don't know how they work. That's a big lie. And the other big lie is they're a threat to the national security, which is also a lie. So what they've done is create talking points that senators like Marco Rubio and others who have not been briefed appropriately uh, or in detail yet on this and are using talking points generated by this criminal cabal of unacknowledged special access projects um, are just sort of parroting whatever it is that they're being told. The problem with that is it all preserves the element of surprise. What do I mean by this? What that means is, is that if the national military command structure, the White House and most of the Senate, as well as most of the Pentagon and most of the CIA do not know and have not been read into the existence of these sorts of technologies, which can be stagecrafted, as they call it and stage events that look alien, then anything that happens will be thought to be extraterrestrial when it is not. This is the heart of the secrecy. Not only are the technologies extraordinary and would save the world's biosphere and would give us an entirely new civilization without pollution or poverty, but by keeping it secret, it preserves their 70-year strategic plan which was concocted in the 40s and 50s, to at some point play this card, as Werner von Braun told Carol Rosen, as the big threat from space that could unite the world around a militaristic totalitarian effort. That's what's happening. It's happening right now. It's unfolding before our eyes. And the fake disclosure that the government is planning may be delayed a little bit but we can't count on it. So for that reason, we need your help on something that uh, we have never done before. Um, the director of Unacknowledged and Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind and his team and my team are doing an emergency open source documentary film. It'll be short, an hour, maybe a little longer, that will be called The Cosmic Threat, an expose. This is something we want to create and release by early June. Now, no one's ever done a, a feature film like this in less than two months, but we need to do it and we need your help. If you go to ce5film.com, you'll see we have a crowdfunding site up. Um, and we're going to also do an event in Scottsdale, Arizona at a private home on April 25th, uh, 2021 for the 20th anniversary of the National Press Club uh, launch of the Disclosure Project that was on May 9th, 2001. This event is gonna be live streamed by webinar that you can join and the support we get from that and the people who appear at the house with us uh, will help, I hope, uh, defray the costs of this emergency documentary that has to come out. Uh, we will have uh, with me at this home in Scottsdale, constitutional attorney Daniel Sheehan, myself, uh, Carol Rosen, who was the spokesperson for Werner Von Braun and was given the task by him to work to prevent the placement of weapons in outer space so that we could have peaceful contact with these extraterrestrial civilizations. Uh, Paula Harris, who is going to be revealing a case that is new and that is more important than Roswell.
has better evidence and is more significant. And it has to do with the extraterrestrial civilization's concern with our uh, atomic and nuclear weapons and what effect those have on the fabric of the universe. We will also be jo have joined with us, um, I hope all of you, but also by internet, the cosmonaut I referred to who trains astronauts and cosmonauts in Russia with astounding new information and evidence and video from the military generals who are coming forward in Russia confirming that we're not alone. And we're also planning uh, to have a sort of an ambassador at large for um, peace and space who is now living in Russia, um, an actor that many of you know uh, named Steven Seagal, who is very devoted to helping us get this message out to the public. And, and uh, he is planning to join us, of course, uh, by internet. Uh, I hope you all will join us for this. And those of you who can join us in person, uh, it's a fundraising event. The information is on our website and will be sent out and there will be links underneath this video. Unfortunately, it's a private home. Um, it can only hold about uh, 20 guests. So uh, it's a large private home. But I hope a few of you can join us for this event on Sunday, the 25th of April, and then stay the rest of the week uh, through Thursday evening, uh, the 29th of April, where uh, we will not be doing a webinar, but we'll have a whole week where we'll be recording the secret history of disclosure and also how contact is made and the relationship between disclosure extraterrestrial contact and close encounters of the fifth kind. That entire five day program, again, will be available just, just around at the most 20 people, unfortunately, because we just don't have a facility that will hold more at this time because of the pandemic. Now, the other thing that uh, we wanna invite you to help us with is networking uh, new dispositive military evidence and documents to stream and put out in this event on April 25th of this year and in this emergency documentary, The Cosmic uh, Threat. Um, we want to, th this hoaxing of a cosmic threat, by the way, is, is exactly what we had predicted back in the 90s and that uh, Werner von Braun had told uh, Carol Rosen would happen. Uh, way back in 1974. Uh, he had known about it apparently from the 50s and perhaps a little sooner. So we're now living in a time, unfortunately, where on the heels of this terrible pandemic, there are plans to falsely disclose an alien threat and then uh, stage events that would terrify everyone on the planet. The only way that that will not be done is that it's exposed in advance. For this reason, and listen very carefully to how we need your help on this, we only need the funding help to get this documentary created and finished in two months, which we've never done, but we're going to release it open source. Now, what do I mean by that? We are not contracting with a film distributor who can tie it up, not for a nanosecond. It will be released to everyone to be put on all their YouTube and other sites bit shoot, whatever it is, by everyone in the world. We will ask every celebrity supporter of universal peace, people like Demi Lovato and, and, and Danica Patrick and many other people who are very involved and concerned about what's happening to put it out to their hundreds of millions of followers. And we're gonna ask that each of you take it, you have my permission, put it on your site, on other sites, on everyone you know, and get it out there. We want at least 1 billion people by this summer to know what the truth about this is and to see this evidence. In this film and on this June 20, I'm, I'm sorry, April 25th event that will be webinar and that you can join us remotely by computer, we will also be presenting the diagrams and models of the man-made UFOs that had been created and been used in hoaxed alien quote-unquote events that are all man-made. 
we will have that evidence there and it will be presented. So I hope you can help us not only create this emergency uh, documentary, but also join us on uh, April uh, 25th on Sunday. But also, if you can come in person, just let us know. Again, it's a very small group because of the exigencies and, and limits of the pandemic. Uh, and that when we have this finished, be ready to receive it, download it, and put it on every site in the world, including Russia, China, India, all over the world. This cannot just be an American or European initiative. It must be global. Because at this point, we are simply uh, running out of time to get this information out and to neutralize the threat. Now, how do you neutralize the threat? You expose their plans before they do it. Listen to just what I said. We must expose not only what they're doing, but how they're gonna do it. What are the assets? What are those aircraft look like? How are they functioning? How might this unfold? We know this information. We have the technology information. We have the schematics. We have the people who worked on them and built them. And the, the really sad thing is that you have Mr. Radcliffe, who is the director of national intelligence, and Senator Marco Rubio specifically saying that these uh, UAPs, which is, again, another fake word they've made up after UFOs, which also is a fake word. When they came up with UFOs, by the way, they already knew that they were both man-made and extraterrestrial, just as, as Ben Rich, the head of Lockheed, stated. But they have both asserted in the last two weeks in mainstream media interviews that these, quote, UAPs are moving in a way, going faster than the speed of sound, but not creating a sonic boom. And that, quote, we don't have that technology. That is absolutely not true. I have personally interviewed engineers who have built that technology and who have worked on them all the way back into the 50s and 60s and more recently. So have my aerospace researchers and team members. So for the director of national intelligence and the ranking member of the Senate Intelligence Committee to be making these statements, they are either completely uninformed or they are repeating a talking point that is a lie. Either way, that is extremely dangerous because in the absence of the knowledge of the truth and the repeating of that lie by the mainstream media over and over and over again, the public is going to think any terrible thing that happens with something that looks like a UFO is quote unquote alien, when in fact it isn't. It is man-made and it is part of an attempt to uh, deceive the public and also to get a lot of funding. Recently, I, a member of my team was talking to Luis Elizondo, who was the a gentleman who, of course, was at the Pentagon, was known as a master uh, counterintelligence disinformation agent, who came out with the Tic Tac footage. And he said, quite frankly, and this was off the record, that they know that the extraterrestrials are not hostile but that you cannot get funding for the defense industry and Pentagon unless there is, quote unquote, a threat. Subsequently, I was in a clubhouse interview with George Knapp, who very honestly, and I commend him for this, said, look, you can't get money for dandelions and butterflies. What does that mean? We were talking about the fact that the only way you can get money and support for the defense establishment is that if there is a national security threat. It's all about power and money, my friends. And he said that that's why dandelions and butterflies, which was his sort of joking term about CE5 peaceful contact and making peace in space and having world peace, that you really can't grow the military industrial complex by trillions of dollars and unite the world around militarism, fascism, and what I call exo-racism, the hatred of other species, uh, unless you present it as a threat. Unfortunately, that is a bit of cynical uh, thinking, 
but it is unfortunately very Washington and very much about money and power. So I think that those of us who are concerned with peace, with the future of this planet for our, ourselves, our children and our grandchildren, I'm expecting our 11th grandchild this year, that we really have got to step up the game because this is all coming to a head. And so I'm making this appeal to all of you to share this video with your friends and family. Go to ce5film.com and help support this uh, initiative. Join us and join the webinar on uh, April 25th for those five hours. It'll be very exciting. And those of you who can, uh, if you can join us in Scottsdale, uh, Arizona uh, for that uh, five day period from uh, April uh, 25th until through April 29th, uh, we would really love to have you there. Uh, it'll be fun. Um, we'll have a great time. And uh, we're all counting on everyone coming together who are ambassadors to the universe in peace and who want the truth out and want a future not of endless war, but a future of universal peace, because that is our destiny. Thank you very much, and I hope to see all of you soon. Bye-bye.